Welcome back to Soccer Talk with the Soul. I'm Sebastian Noel in for Adam Deal today. We're going to continue now our talk about things ongoing in the world of soccer. First, we're going to move into some rumors. That's Dan is still with us. First, Arsene Wenger is on the hot seat again, right? Is this, yeah, is uh, this the year it finally happens? It's a yearly, you know, a yearly experience for Arsenal fans, right? I mean, if you look at Arsene Wenger, I think that there's not going to be any Arsenal fan that would disagree that, you know, he's been probably the best manager in our history, and he's been you know, one of the best managers in the Premier League era, right? I mean, anyone who can last for that long and done what he's done is phenomenal. And you got to look, right? Worst case Arsene Wenger scenario was qualifying for Champions League, but we've missed out on the title for too long. Um, I'm personally someone who thinks that... You've missed out on the title for too long? <laughs> well, you know, when you're used to winning it, or you know when you win it before, you, you know, you miss it. You know, you don't miss things that you've never seen, so... Um, I saw it when I was eight. I, can't, I cannot relate. I saw it As a Bayern Munich fan, I cannot relate. I saw relate. it when I was right? eight. You'd miss it if one year you didn't win it, though. Yeah, right? that would be awful. Uh, I, I don't even speak of it, It's a really competitive league. Yeah, right, yeah. So uh, <laughs> I, I think, personally, I would like him to make the decision himself to move down. Uh, you know, there's rumors that they've offered him a two-year contract extension, and it's on him. Um, there's other great managers out there, and I would say that, you know, you look at all the other teams in the league, and it's been very mixed on how that th has gone, right? When Ferguson left, we kind of went through a um, couple of years of Man United turnover where no one seemed to kind of hit that mark. Um, you never know whether it'd be the same at Arsenal, right? Um, so I, I, do I think this year? I think it really depends on um, the rest of our season. I think he's gonna hold off. I think he'll look at um, if we do make Champions League, if we do win an FA Cup, um, how we do in Champions League. And then I think he's gonna determine whether he's gonna leave. Now, Michael Ballack said this week, uh, if Mesut Ozil wants to win a title or a dozen, he should move to Bavaria and join Bayern Munich. Now, I mean, how, how big would a Mesut Ozil departure be for Arsenal? You know, I'd say that's m mixed opinion, right? I mean, I would say that if you want to win a title, going to Bayern Munich is probably a safe place to go, or Juventus, right? You're kind of almost guaranteed a title. Um, I think he would be phenomenal in Bayern Munich. I think he'd be given the the luxury that he needs with space in order to distribute like he does. I think that his skill set isn't overly suited to the Premier League. I think we're too physical for his, you know, to really get the best out of him. And I think that the way Arsene Wenger set up Arsenal team doesn't give him what he needs to be the best Mets Ozil. Um, if he left, I'm, I would imagine we get a lot of money for him and I would probably take a, a Griezmann or Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang over him simply because I think we've got, you know, Jack Wilshire, Alex Awobi, um, and a couple, of, a couple other players who could play that number 10 role. But is Balak, is that just an ex-Chelsea player taking a stab at it? That's a, it's a German boy. It's, it's, it's a German wanting a German, right? I mean, it makes sense, right? I yeah, mean, I sure. think that, you know, it, right, you kind of want that, that contingency there, sure. right? It makes sense. I think it makes sense for Ozil. Um, unfortunately, I think that, you know, he's too inconsistent for me. You know, he can be anywhere from a 10 to a 2 on any given day. And uh, if you look at the Chelsea performances, right, first game he was a 10, second one he was a 2. Um, Premier League, you got to be consistent, especially when you're asking for 250000 a week. And always a 4. <laughs> That's a good point. It's better than being fifth or sixth, <laughs> though, right? I mean, <laughs> fair point, fair point. And I don't think money would be an issue because, I mean, you know, Bayern, that's never a problem. Those guys don't it's, really it's Arsenal's pay structure, pay right? their I taxes mean, anyway. Yeah. So it's, it's, <laughs> there's, there's rumors that, you know, Spurs are looking at Lalana right now and that Liverpool's giving him a contract extension and paying him 150000 a week. And you look at the Arsenal structure and we've got Sanchez and Ozil on 125. Are you really going to compete in the English Premier League doing such a tight pay structure? People are going to love the badge on the jersey, but they may never see the badge on the jersey through greed, right? But now, so, has Arsenal's style point. kind of held uh, Mesut Ozil back a little bit, do you think? He's a very talented player. I think so. I mean, if you look at the way we try to play, I mean, he is a guy who needs, you know, I think structure behind him, and when he's at his best is when we counterattack, he's got some space, and he can spot speedy runners. If you look at Arsenal's last couple of seasons, we've had an Olivier Giroud up front. He's not a guy who's ever going to run onto a through ball, right? I mean, Metsu was very successful at Real Madrid because he had a Karim Benzema and, a, you know, a, I wouldn't say Bale, but a, a Ronaldo to run onto those pinpoint passes. There's no accurate pass that can really put Olivier Giroud through on a through ball because he's too slow. Now, where does Romelu Lukaku end up, do you think? Probably back at Chelsea or maybe Paris Saint-Germain. Um, 
you know, I think that the way that Everton were bought out recently, they, they're not hurting for money and it's going to have to, he's, he's what, 23, 24 years old, scoring four goals in a Premier League. You know, he's probably got to 100 goals quicker than most people, you know. Um, it's going to take, especially, you know, looking at the money is being spent in the Premier League or the TV money, he's a 80 to 100 million pound man in my opinion and you know I could see Chelsea selling someone to a Chinese Super League who's worth 15 for 60 and turning around and buying Lukaku with some of that change. Now where does that striker Mary go around where does it stop for Griezmann? I know where you would like it to stop. I think that depends on the season right I mean if you look at um, the way that the Premier League set up right now if Man United doesn't make it to Champions League I think he would second guess himself on a Man United move um, you know Pogba's part of the program when we're going forward and we're going to build this team. Um, how many years is that going to be acceptable for you not to be in the Premier League? Um, there's rumors that Arsenal is going to bid for him. I think that any team in the world would really want him. Um, it's, it's, it's hard to tell, right? A, a Bayern Munich, a Paris Saint-Germain. Uh, you know, again, it's going to be another 80, 100 million dollar kind of Now, place. I never thought that Kun Aguero would leave Man City. But with Pep, you just never know. Gabriel so what, what Jesus is phenomenal, there? right? I mean, he came in, he's banging in goals everywhere. Um, Pele came out not too long ago and said he thinks that he's already a better player than Neymar, which that is a very bold statement oh. for a Brazilian because Neymar is the golden child, right? Um, do I think Aguero will leave? Uh, it depends on Real Madrid, I think, right? I mean, they are rumored to want him. He's 29, still kind of in his prime. I think he'd kill it in La Liga. Um, I could see him, you know, I could see him going there for a good chunk of change, and if he did, you, like you said, it would create the merry-go-round, right? His, Pep wants Abamajang to come play at City. His old pal Carlos scary. Tevez is in China now, right? With Shanghai, he did. He just he did, his debut. They just got knocked out of the cup. So what is it start. about China that is just looking to take over the the, the world of money players? It's yeah, money. I mean, well, of course, <laughs> yeah. Tevez, right? Thirty-five <laughs> years old, and they said, "Hey, we'll pay you seven hundred thousand pounds a week." I mean. I don't care how much you don't like China. I mean, that's just stupid. A million dollars a week, right? How I mean, much will it I'll dilute, sit here for a year. How much will it dilute some of the world's biggest leagues? I think that it depends on the person, right? I mean, I, I couldn't see a, a Griezmann or anyone deciding to go there. I think that the people are going to see it as, look, I've accepted my career. It's probably not going to be the most competitive, and I'll go collect a final paycheck. Yep. A Rooney-type player. I really don't see it. It's going to have a, a drastic impact. I think they limit the number of foreign players, and I just don't think... You don't hear, oh, in the Chinese league, this happened. I mean, no. you hear Demba Ba scored or, yeah. you know, that kind of thing. I How much could that curtail some of these retirement tours in the MLS and hurt the That's MLS? where I could see a big yep. impact, right? Because you're going from, you know, I'm going to the MLS to retire, right? That's been the go-to, I think, what people say. Um, and now China, absolutely. I mean, because there's never going to be a comparison of wage. Um, so I think that depends on greed. And uh, if you look at the, the way football has gone the past couple of years, greed has paid a very big impact in a lot of decisions people have made. Finally, who replaces Petr Cech if he heads out? Um, sure you're asking an Arsenal <laughs> fan this, right? Um, <laughs> the look on his face. Right. Is the Rumors of Joe Hart. You know, I right, that's the big one, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. Arsene Wenger already said no. We've got Chesney, who's on loan still, who's you know 26 years old. David Ospina's 29. Um, I'd say those are two good goalies. Yeah, uh, you know, Arsene Wenger's not want to splash cash for no reason. Um, he calls all three. <laughs> for any reason, for that <laughs> matter. Right. right. <laughs> <laughs> um, he doesn't splash cash for any reason. And if he feels that he has those two keepers and we have Martinez as our third or fourth goalie at this point, um, I don't think he's going to spend money on that. And I think that, you know, Peter Cech will slowly get demoted to the bench and Ospino will move in and Cech will move on to a. Galatasaray, Fenerbahce type team probably in the summer, as I guess. So let me ask you, we're talking about signings here from all across Europe. There's been some signings locally, hasn't there? Yes, there has, but there, there's been a, quite a lot. If you look at the high school commits, there's been a few football, there's been a few basketball, but soccer, the list is very long, especially on the girls' side. Jasmine Marwan, fantastic, Steve. She's going to Texas San Antonio. I believe Texas San Antonio this is a school where former La Cueva coach Kevin Driggs is at now. You see Cleveland's represented. El Dorado's got a pair. How about I know. Hope? Kevin's at West Texas. Oh, that's right. Yeah, it was yeah, West Texas. Yeah. Okay. Delaney, that's where Delaney Markham is going, I believe, right? As Taylor Heckroth, too. As long as Nora Harwash. Three of them there at La Cueva. Uh, St. Pius is also well represented there with Tatiana Limon. They're all American going to New Mexico State. And look at those UNM commits. Yeah, there's a lot, of, a lot of local young ladies going to UNM. 
But yeah, I mean, Kevin is, he's taken in quite a haul of the West Texas A&M locally here. And then you go over to the boys' side. How about the Tausch brothers at Academy? Phenomenal. They're young, just young so players. talented. One going to Cornell, one going to Penn. We, we, we saw them train uh, with the Soul last year. Uh, we did a little orientation with some of the guys that were training with us. Just two professional, well put together young men. Very, very polite, very courteous. Um, I got to meet these two young men. I don't know the other young men that were on there. We're proud of all them committing, too. Zach Middleton uh, was the other one from Bosque that was up there. I got a chance to PA announce during the state soccer tournament, and uh, he was on our field there, and he is a phenomenal young talent as well. A team that maybe isn't full of stars, he was that absolute go-to there. So from everyone at the Soul, we want to congratulate yes. all these local Bravo. soccer talents for taking their talents to the next level. That's always very exciting. Let's talk U.S. soccer now. <laughs> There's been a transition, of course, there has. From, from Jurgen Klinsmann to, to Bruce Arena. My first question is, how much roster turnover would be appropriate? How much would be too much roster turnover? <sighs> That's tough to say. Can you put a number on that? <laughs> Whatever fits in your system, right? I mean, realistically, if you turn around and you, you want to develop a system, you can't just use you know, the, the skeleton of an old coach, right? If, if Bruce Arena is going to come in and decide that he's going to take a different approach than Klinsman's made, I would say you probably got a core players who are going to be there. Um, but I would say there's going to be a reasonable amount of turnover. But then again, you don't want to mess with the dynamic of a team, right? You're going to have some players who are hitting form who are you know, used to playing with other players. But the dynamic they had was not very good. Well, I was going to say, how long does it take to put in a system? Because you could argue that Jurgen never got there. Well, that, but the thing is, so Arena is, it does not play, I think, as attractive soccer as right. other coaches would want. And, and Arena is going to play to the player's strengths. And it's one thing I don't know if Jurgen did. I think Jurgen was, was a little more stubborn in sticking with the system that he wanted. Mm -hmm. And he's come in and revamped the youth game all the way up to the senior team. And now he's... But these players aren't quite ready for that system, and it was like he was trying to put a, what's the old saying, a round peg into a square hole mm -hmm. with some of these players. I think Arena is going to play to the players' strengths. I think it's going to be a less attractive game in soccer, but I think we're going to get which, more results. I think which he'll, is benef he'll the benefit nil -nil. from Klinsman, though. I mean, right. I think that you know there was a breakthrough of a couple of players there that you know really opened the eyes to people in the world, let alone America, right? I mean, sure. Pulisic is one that you know I think that. You know, he's going to be a star. He's a phenomenal player. I hope he stays at Dortmund for a while because... Well, that won't happen, but we all know where he'll end up. <laughs> but right. the, the crowd... I mean, Jason, if we can pull up the, the picture of the U.S. team at the Serbia game, the crowds... I mean, the women's fans are drawing... The women's games are drawing more fans than the men's games these year. This, and it's just, you know, it's been... It's ironic because the women have been fighting for the same kind of pay scale and everything as the men. Uh, and you look at that picture there. That's from the Serbia game in San Diego. It's not like there's no soccer fans in San Diego. Well, and you no, could argue just... that, that Jurgen really left a sour taste kind of in the fans' mouth towards the end of his tenure there. Wouldn't you yeah. agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I, we think he did. So, I mean, they, of course, they had the 1-0 win against Jamaica, which was, which was positive. But obviously, we all, we all want the U.S. national team to go win games. And if it might be a little less attractive, but they're going to win, I'm all for it. All right, finally, let's, uh, you had some tryouts a couple of weeks ago, right? Yeah, we had How tryouts. Tryouts went really well. Uh, we had 60 or 70 guys, I think, came out. Uh, guys as young as 17 this year, as old as, I think, 35. Couldn't get Dan Lodge out there I'll be this out year. There this he's, next been, one. he's been training for his marathon, so I think, I'll, I think I'll he'll be out, be out, out there, there next time. Next time. Uh, but it's a fun environment. From the tryouts, we go to the preseason, okay? So Coach picked, uh, I think, about 20 guys from the tryouts. Uh, that showed that they have the talent to do so and that they're able to perform at the next level. So they're going to compete in our preseason starting in March, uh, games in April going into May, and then we'll see how many of those can actually come up to the first team. Uh, one more quick, I know we're going to round out the show here in a second. Uh, foot golf, Jason, I know we got some pictures from foot golf last time around. We are uh, announcing our next foot golf tournament. Uh, these are some of the people getting ready to go out there and play April 15th. Uh, last time we had Star Brothers out there serving the Electric Sun official beer of the Soul. They're of course the sponsor of the Soul on the show. U.S. Bank stepped up. I heard Adam Deal was tournament. well served by Star Brothers. Adam Deal uh, was was played well in the tournament <laughs> and, and uh, <laughs> was proudly sponsored by Star Brothers in the tournament. No, I think uh, Adam and I had a pretty funny interview after we'd both had a couple drinks on the field uh, playing, playing uh, football. But for those of you who haven't played, 
It's so much fun. My wife played. She's never kicked a soccer ball in her life. She said that was the funnest event she's ever done. When she heard foot golf tournament, she thought, oh, golf tournament, this is going to be boring. Well, it's just like swinging golf clubs, except you're kicking a soccer ball, and it goes to an oversized hole. So you'll see that on our website. If you go to abqsoulfc.com, you'll see how you can register for the next foot golf tournament. Pretty sure Dan Lodge is going to be out I'll there. I'll be there. I know Adam Deal is going to be out there. We've got to get you out there. It's going to yeah, be a good day. I mean, from the pictures we saw, you guys had a lot of fun. And we forgot to mention, I forgot, the secret weapon, the man behind the scenes. <laughs> That's right, our there. director, Jason Pohl. Jason Pohl uh, has, a, has a mean drive on the football right? well, yeah, yeah, fairway. Yeah. They, so. he, he was uh, at El Dorado when they were just the soccer powerhouse. So. Yeah, he's, he's the reason for Devin Sandoval's success, is what right, I've heard. Yeah. Yeah, that's Taught him everything he knows, right? Yeah. Yeah. Taught him everything he, scored, he knows. Didn't he score the penalty that Devin couldn't? I think, I think, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> yeah. So that'll just about do it for us. I think it was fantastic. I want to thank Amanda Powers for coming on. Really shed this light on this whole stadium buzz that's been that's around exciting. the city. Um, good luck in your pursuit of fourth, Dan. <laughs> Thanks. We're we'll seeing, seeing Champions League pretty soon. Ryan, Ryan, it's <laughs> Hopefully a, for a different result than always. <laughs> right. Ron, it's always a pleasure. Sebastian And we Noel. got your scarf. I know, right? Yes. For, got my free scarf, finally. <laughs> You've been watching Soccer Talk with the Soul right here on ProView Networks.